We're going to be reading from Matthew 19, verses 4 through 5. And then my wife is going to be reading from Ephesians 5, verses 33. When you have it, say amen. God is good? All right. All the time? So I'll make sure y'all awake. Okay. Matthew 19, verses 4 through 5 says, Haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied. They record that from the beginning, God made the male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. If you can jump over to Ephesians 5.33, and it reads, So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for just being the God that creates relationships, Father, being the God that created love, being the God that created unity. We ask you this morning as we start our relationship relation tip series, Father, that you open up our ears, Lord, to what you have to say about relationships, Father. We know that you are the author, therefore you know how relationships should be. And we praise you, Jesus. While we're talking to you, God, please bless the New England Patriots with another Super Bowl ring, Father. Bless Tom Brady. Let him be healthy. Let his arm be strong. In Christ's name we pray and the church say. Amen. Amen. While we're talking, while we're talking to God, why do I feel so short? I don't know. What is wrong with this? We stand up. So the month of February is known all throughout the world as the month of love, and we have what we call Relation Tips series. Everybody say Relation Tips. Relation Tips tip series that we're doing all throughout campuses, and we're going to be bestowing upon you some relationship advice for those that are single, for those that are married, for those that are looking to be married, for those that are it's kind of a confusion, you don't know what you are. Um, so we want to do that this morning with you. For, for before we begin, we just want to take a survey throughout the crowd. How many people are married in the sanctuary? You're married, married and happy. Just raise your hand. Married and happy. Praise the Lord. Give it up for them saints. All right. How many people are single? You're single, you're single. All right. Raise them high. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. Look around. I'm trying to help you. Look around now. Look around. Look around. I'm trying to help you. All right. All right. How many people don't know what you are? You're confused. You don't, don't, don't know what you are. So we want to be right with our time in the 25 minutes that we have to give you some advice. We like to say that we are not perfect. We do not have it all together. We've been together for about six years. We're really five, but my wife says we've been dating for three. We were dating for two years, off one year, but she includes that one year that we were off, and we've been married um, since 2013. Amen. I'm glad you gave the year because that time frame was incorrect. Thank you very much, baby. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we just want to bestow some, some advice upon you. And I realize that a lot of times the reason that we have problems with our relationships is because we don't do it God's way. And if we did it God's way, there's some of the issues that we have in our relationships we want to be having. It. So we want to give you three tips this morning and then we'll be on our way. Amen. Amen. The first tip that we have, and you write this down, date with a purpose and consider the cost. Successful relationships happen on purpose, not by accident. I'm going to say this again. Date with a purpose and consider the cost. Successful relationships happen on purpose, not by accident. If you look at the scriptures that we just read, Matthew 19, verses 4 through 5, states that Jesus said that God created man and woman. He said, therefore, they shall leave their house, they shall leave their mom and dad, and they shall become one with each other. So the goal in our relationships, especially romantic relationships, is becoming one flesh. Not just becoming one flesh in your own regard, but becoming one flesh in the glory of God. So we becoming one in God. So you must have a purpose to your dating. I meet a lot of singles that sometimes just say, hey, I'm just dating just to date. I'm just here to have fun. And then the next time you see them, is like they're frustrated with their relationship 
but you never had a purpose to begin with, so why are you frustrated when nothing had a purpose to begin with? So our dating life should be one with a purpose that the goal is to become one flesh with whoever we are with. Amen? And scripturally saying that we are not to be unequally yoked, that means we should be same in purpose as in, as in faith and also in purpose. Just because somebody's a Christian doesn't mean that they're the one for you. Amen. They also, also have to be one with you in purpose and also in faith. Really quickly, the way I dated with a purpose and considered the cause when I met my beautiful wife was when I first met her, she was very surprised because I kept on asking some serious questions. I wasn't playing no games. This I is, was asking, listen. This is when we're like, this is our first interaction with each other. My best friend introduced us, and he's asking questions. So I, I, people don't ask questions. If I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you, I need to know. But you didn't know you were going to spend the rest of your life with me. I need to know, what's your shower life like? Do you take a shower every day? <laughs> how, what's your relationship with soap? Do you know how to cook? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you actually go, I need to know some vital things that's important to me because if I'm going to become one with somebody, I heard somebody say that marriage is the only time where you get to choose your relatives. Because when you become one with somebody, they become what? Your family. So I can't just be dating just to date. I have to date with a purpose. One of the ways that I was, while we were dating or before we started dating, and I was considering the cost. What I did, thank goodness for social media today, I researched Jonas. Like, right after we met, I didn't know if anything would happen after that day that we met. I think we exchanged numbers, I don't remember. But I was like, let me check this brother out. So I went to his Facebook, I looked up everything on his page, and even more, I realized, since my best friend had introduced us, we had a lot of mutual friends. Facebook tells it all. And so I was able to reach out to some of those friends and say, hey, so what do you think about Jonas? Like, I just met him, and I was just curious. And that's how I really researched him to see if he ever did call me, because he got my number. I didn't get his number. If he ever did call me, I want to be able to, you know, decide, am I going to answer or not answer? And so I was able to, everybody who spoke to me was able to tell me, oh, all great things. Like, nobody has anything negative to say about him. And so that helped me to move forward with our first unofficial date. So another thing that I did was our first unofficial date was we went to Lake Yola to feed the homeless, right? Um, I met her, and I said, hey, she asked me, what are some things you like to do? I said, hey, I like to feed the homeless, me and a group of guys or um, this church group go and feed the homeless. And she's like, I want to come, too. I thought she was just playing games, like, who wants to feed the homeless for their first? They just met somebody. But I came late to the event. I was very, very late. But when I came, when I came, I just saw her feeding the homeless without me. She didn't know nobody there, but I just saw how she cared for the people that we were assisting and, and feeding. And I just looked back and I said, you know what? I could see her and me doing that for the rest of our lives. So I had to look at myself and look at her and say, are we connected in purpose? And that's when I knew, like, God, this is somebody I could pursue because I'm not just dating her just because we have the same faith. I'm dating her because we have the same purpose, and I'm considering this cause. Remember, when you become one flesh, what you're initially saying is, I'm going to give some of myself, and I'm going to receive some of you. And you're going to receive some of me, and you're going to give me some of who you are. We become the person we connect with. Amen? So please, date with a purpose and consider a cause. The second point we want to point out is people are not just projects. Don't fall in love with potential while ignoring their actions. Let me say it again. People are not just projects. Don't fall in love with their potential while ignoring their actions. Me and my wife recently, um, not recently, but a few years back, we took a, a, a picture together that kind of went viral. I don't know if we have the picture up yet, but um, there's this picture of me and my wife and this other couple. You guys might have seen it. All right. So it says, the caption says, 
Check this out. Same couple, he married her as she was beautiful and helped her change her life. That's what real love does. My kind of man, my kind of marriage. Now, what's incredible about this, this, if it was true, would be an amazing story. But what I see is people will either go after fantasy that actually live in reality. Because obviously, we are not the couple on the left. But what the world is saying, and we actually contacted this couple as a whole story behind it, and they're doing happy and well. But what the world is saying to this beautiful woman on the left is saying that you cannot find love unless he sees something that you are going to be, not who you are. And let me tell you, he is still with her, and she may be the same size or may have, 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 have shrunken down, but he sees her for who she is and fell in love for who she is, not who she's going to be. So when we fall in love and when we go into our relationship, you can't just see just potential. You got to be with the person. If I would be with this person and they would never change, would I still love them? And what I want to add about this is, this picture was taken almost three years ago. I was actually pregnant with my son in this picture, but nobody knew yet because I was in the first trimester. And since then, this picture still keeps surfacing, and people argue over this picture, saying that either they're the same couple or they're not. But even more, when I read the comments, the hope that this lie gives people, I'm like, I can't even get mad at that because everybody just wants to be loved. You know what I mean? And so they find hope that, hey, I could look one way or be one way, and he can love me through that. So I just find that interesting. And, and I find that a lot of times the trap that we see ourselves is when we go into relationships, we don't go into relationships thinking people as people. We think of them as project because our first thing that comes to mind is I could change her. I, I could fix him. Listen, let me tell you, you could encourage you can guide, you can motivate, but you cannot change anybody. You cannot change anyone. That is between them and the Holy Spirit. But you can encourage. You got to really look at that person and say that I'm going to be with you for who you are now, not just who I think you're going to be in the future. When I look at relationships, I think of it like a puzzle. I think of the pieces have to fit for the picture, for you to see the picture clearly and for it to be a beautiful picture in the end. And so just to give you an example, before Jonas, uh, I've mentioned it a, a lot, the last time we actually spoke that I was in a long-term relationship about five years and I just felt like we just did not fit, especially after we did premarital counseling and God revealed some things to me. But I thank God that I was courageous enough to end it when I knew it wasn't going anywhere. It was not gonna be a beautiful picture in the end, even though I was trying to make it fit. I even think of this example when you're not a good fit for each other. Imagine your shoe size is an eight, and you find this bomb shoes at DSW for that seven, size seven, and you're like, ooh, there's no eight in this. I'm gonna try to put this shoe on. And you're going to be hurting trying to put that shoe on. You may get your toes in there, the, the front of your foot, but your whole foot's not going to get in there, and you're trying to push, and you're trying to squeeze. You may even get some shoe expanders or try to get it bigger, but it's just not going to fit. And sometimes you really do just have to let it go and really see God. And I thank God for that because then I found Jonas, or Jonas found me. That's a time to praise God. Praise the Lord. Look at what God saved her from. Look at what she has. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But it's so serious that we don't fall in love with potential and do not see the signs in front of us that this is not the right fit, as Katia says, in our relationships. I had a personal relationship, too, before I met my beautiful wife with someone that was from another faith. And I remember praying to God, say, God, this is the one for me. You cannot take her away from me. I love her. And next thing I know, God did take her away. She moved to another country. And so God is so smooth. Where if you don't see it, he will make circumstances happen where you have no choice but to confront with the actions of what that person is doing. So fall in love with the person, not the potential.
just don't ignore. They're, they'll tell you things. Don't ignore things. Just because someone tells you, oh, I'm going to go to school, or I'm going to finish school, or I'm going to be this thing, or we're going to, you know, get out of debt, don't just hear the words that are coming out of their mouth. Actually see what progress they're making towards those goals, and that will tell you a lot. You know, this is an additive. This is not even on our notes. You could tell a lot about somebody by how they treat their family and friends. If they're able to disrespect their family, who to say they can't disrespect you? You see, you could tell a lot about how committed they are if they're committed with their friends, their, their jobs. If, if they're always having a job every other month, if they're always having a new best friend every other season in their life, do you know they're practicing divorce and not commitment? How do you expect somebody to be committed to you when they're so used to disregarding other people, when they're so used to leaving one thing and getting something else new. So look at the signs before you go after the potential. Amen. Number three, expectations should be clearly expressed, not implied. Expectations should be clearly expressed, not implied. The definition of expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future, a belief that someone will or should achieve something. See, what we have is we have expectations. Most relationships break up because of improper, unclear expectations. Expectations assumes that the person you are with agrees to meet the desires that you have. And that means that your happiness is connected on whether or not they meet your expectations. In a biblical form, we see that in Ephesians 5, verse 33. There are particular commands for man and women. It says in Ephesians 5, verse um, 33, so again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So we see the Bible commands for men to do what? Love their wives, and for women to do what? respect their husbands. That means that even though both of them may want the same thing, one needs something more than the other. Women need love and intimacy. Men need respect. This is how we are designed as a gender. That means that anybody could disrespect a man, but when he gets disrespected by his own home, in his own home by his wife, it's something totally different. Anybody could show love to a woman, but when she doesn't receive love at home when she needs it, there's something totally different and wrong to that picture. And both men and women, when they do not receive the proper expectations, will try to find it somewhere else. And when you think about those deep needs that we need as male and female, woman and man, this is not, Jonas is referring to while you're married, but even before you get married, those things have to be practiced in your dating stage, your courtship. So if a guy is just easily disrespecting you and not loving you the way you need to be loved, that's, again, red flag. Like, caution, check him out deeper. And the same thing for the husband. If you're constantly getting disrespected, it's something that's gonna continue on. Marriage just amplifies the things that are in your dating stage. Amen. You know, a lot of marriages, women, a lot of marriages, and this is for the women, a lot of your marriages would be great and intact if we just practiced just being nice. If we would just say, I'm sorry, and apologize. Men, a lot of your relationships would be better if you just gave a sister a back rub. If you just gave her some flowers from time to time. Call her just anonymously, just saying, I just called you to say I love you. Just giving her what she needs, not what you need, what she needs. Giving him what he needs, not what you need, what he needs. I like this analogy. I heard it one time. It says says, um, cars needs gas to function. You don't need the gas, but the car does. So try to give each other what we innately need. Um, this book that we go through in our marriage um, small groups called Love and Respect by Dr. Emerson, he says that, Couples can either be in one of three cycles. Number one cycle is called the crazy cycle. The crazy cycle is that without love, she reacts in disrespect. Without 
Without love, she reacts, excuse me, without love, she reacts without respect. He reacts without love. I'm going to say it again. Without love, she reacts without respect. He reacts without love. That means that when we don't give each other what we need, there's the reason why we act in a certain way. We also have the energizer cycle. The energizer cycle says his love motivates her respect, motivates his love. His love motivates her respect, motivates his love. And lastly, the rewarding cycle. His love, which is what we ultimately need to get to, his love, regardless of her respect, regardless of his love, his love, regardless of her respect, regardless of his love. That means I'm going to love her whether or not she respects me or not because God told me to do it. And she's going to respect me whether or not I love her because who? God told her to do that. Oh, one time that we, not one time, several times we in the crazy Wait a cycle. Minute. Wait a okay, minute. I'm going to say one time. Several times we've been in the crazy cycle. This one um, um, circumstance that she allowed me to say is uh, we had an argument at Walmart. Anybody ever had an argument at Walmart before? And um, so the argument was... That's why we don't grocery shop together. The argument was she was handling something for my family. I think she was trying to set up some airplane tickets, and they were giving her a hard time. So I said, baby, I know my family. Let me talk to them, because if you go crazy, you're going to make me go crazy. Then I'm going to go crazy on everybody, so just give me the phone. So she didn't want to give me the phone. She just kept on talking, and she wanted to solve it her own way. So I felt that was a sign of disrespect that she did not trust me to handle and talk to my family. After that, she hung up the phone, and I just, I just got so mad. I was yelling at her. I was like, don't you understand? You don't trust me. And what you do, baby? I say, you tripping. I'm going to walk away. And I left him in the aisle. She left me in the aisle by myself, talking to myself looking crazy. But we were on the crazy cycle because I felt disrespected. Therefore, I gave her an unloving answer. And therefore, she just left and disrespected me because of the crazy cycle. Turn to the neighbor and say, don't go, go. Through, the through the crazy cycle. And if you do, try to get out of it quickly. In my opinion, there are two types of people. There are those people who clearly express their expectations, but they may not be realistic expectations. And then there's those who imply their expectations and get frustrated when they're not met. So those would be considered unmet expectations. Clear expectations should be expressed with each phase of a relationship. So when you're in your dating stage, make expectations at that point. That's going to prepare you if you're deciding to move into engagement and marriage. Once you're married, there's going to be a new set of expectations with that stage. Then you add kids in the mix if you do it in that order. There's going to be a new set of expectations then. Then the kids leave the home and you're empty nesters. You got to continue to communicate and talk to each other about what your needs are in each stage because we're always evolving, we're always changing as individuals. Oh, <laughs> so just to give an example of my personality, I'm not the most direct person, especially when it comes to expressing myself. Um, growing up, I was very much an internalizer. I dealt with things inside and didn't articulate myself very well. And so one of my expectations when um, Jonas and I got married that I had of him was that he'd be a handyman. When we got married, we were living in a condo, so we're renting. Everything's provided by our landlord. But I'm like, okay, we're going to buy a house. And when we get a house, you know, I like projects, so he's going to help me fix things. And we're going to do renovations to the home, things like that. And I quickly realized when we got married that Jonas rather pays somebody to do things in the house than do it himself and save money. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I never knew she had that expectation of me because she never expressed it. 
She just thought where you are a man, check. So that means you must be a handyman, check. I don't have that spiritual gift. Okay? Now, me in turn, I had some expectations of her. I assumed that because she was raised in a Haitian household, that she actually knew and loved how to cook Haitian food. I came from a background where my mother cooked every day, twice on Sunday. I never knew about some of the fast foods that some people eat. When I met her, that's when I knew about Popeyes and all this other stuff. So I wasn't used to all of that. So I assumed that she had the spiritual gift because when I saw that her resume, the culinary section, I thought she said she could cook. She can, but I thought she loved it. I didn't know until, you know, she told it to me. I thought she was playing. She was like, hey, I don't really, you know, enjoy cooking like every single day. And I was like, yeah, right, it's that girl. Stop playing. <laughs> but that, that was my expectation is only when I got into the relationship, I realized that, hey, she doesn't cook as much as I would like her to. And she doesn't cook as much of Haitian food as I would like her to as well. But I told him. He just did not listen to me clearly. I told him, Haitian food takes way too long. I ain't got no time for that. So, but I told him. Stop clapping. Before Stop clapping. he put a ring on the finger. Stop clapping. Do I, listen, I, do I have to? We are raising a generation of young women <laughs> that don't know how to cook their native food. Foods and cuisines. Do you know this is heritage being passed down, legacy? Anyway. anyway. Moving on. But what I'm saying is, if you express your expectations in the relationship in the beginning, then you have no excuse to be mad at somebody if they don't meet that or if you don't meet that expectation. Stop withholding expectation in fear that they will leave you if you tell them what you really want. Because if they would leave you after you tell them what you really want, then they weren't with you in the, in the first place. Amen. Do not be afraid to express your expectations. Because it's better to find out in the beginning than find out later on. Amen. Even with those examples that we just shared, you see again how important communication is. Although men and women are supposed to become one flesh in the Lord, God has created men and women so differently, especially in the area of communication. In the book that he referred to, Love and Respect, by Dr. Emerson, he states that, I'm going to give you the visual. He states that women see through pink sunglasses, hear through pink hearing aids, and speak through a pink megaphone. And then he said for men, men see through blue sunglasses, they hear through blue hearing aids, and they speak through a blue megaphone. So when you think about that picture, it's not that we're wrong in how we say things or our perspectives, it's just that we're so different that sometimes there's gonna be miscommunication. For example, I'm gonna give this example that he actually gave. When women say, I have nothing to wear, that really means I have nothing new to wear. <laughs> when men say I have nothing to wear that really means I have nothing clean to wear but we said the exact same words nothing different in that sentence but our meaning is completely different Exactly. So we have to learn how to study each other in our relationships so we can understand what we actually mean. Another example for this is Katia, when she says it's down the street, it means two or three miles around the corner. Stop sign may take a toll and it's down the street. I mean, it's right down the street. You can actually walk down the street. So we have to take time. We have to take time to study our partner to know what they really mean when they say certain things. Remember, communication is 93% nonverbal and only 7% verbal. That means that we communicate nonverbally more than we actually speak verbally. So we have to take time to understand what we're saying. Amen? Amen. God wants us to have wonderful relationships that reflect him in order that we must glorify him. 
One thing I also want to say, I add this on there, is sometimes you can read the right people, but at the wrong time. Just like what we say in real estate, location, location, location. In relationships, timing, timing, and timing is everything. What's incredible is that God will set you up with people at the perfect time when you are ready for them and they are ready for you. Me and my wife, so funny that we knew the same people. We were in the, some of the same parties, excuse me, Holy Ghost meetings that <laughs> ran late in the night. <laughs> but we never met each other. Literally, when we sat down and finally at, at the Starbucks talking, I was like, they're after the, the, we fed the homeless. We were talking. We're like, wow, you know this person. You know that person. You were there. I was there, too. We never met each other. But truth be told, I wasn't ready for her, and she wasn't ready for me. We would not have connected if we would have met at that time. But God orchestrates it that if you seek him first, that you will meet somebody that's seeking him, and you will both be ready for each other. Do not, do not try to get with somebody that you know is not ready for you. And do not try to get with somebody that you know you're not ready for them. Amen. So we want to leave you with this. Remember, number one, date with a purpose and consider the cost. Number two, don't treat people as projects. And number three, make your expectations clear and not implied. Amen. If you receive that, can you give God a clap? Amen. Amen.